All right, people. Mike Salden here again. Welcome back to another video. Today, uh, I just checked out Silent Hill: The Short Message. Uh, it's the free demo. I, I, well, I suppose it's actually like a full game. Only it's like a little two-hour game. Um, but it is free to play. Um, I don't want to call it a demo because it's not like for a bigger, wider game. It's just a little sort of tech demo for this team, I would guess. Uh, but really what Konami's trying to do here, I think, is recapture the magic of PT, which was a free playable teaser that Kojima made back in the day. Um, I feel a bit strange playing this, to be honest, because it is so blatant that they're trying to copy the marketing campaign that Kojima was kicking off after they like shut down that game and got rid of him and ruined all the hype for that original game. And now they're back 10 years later just trying to repeat it and it's like why did you waste your time getting rid of Kojima and shutting down the original game it's just a bit hard to swallow coming back to try this um, but yeah I don't want to be just bashing it just because Kojima didn't make it but it is there is a sour taste in my mouth going into it so I'm just going to be upfront about that um, I do think this was made by uh, Japanese developers again, so I think it's going to have a bit more of the old school kind of storytelling that I enjoy uh, from the original Silent Hill games when they were made in Japan. Because the main problem with those western developed ones is that they didn't have the correct perspective uh, of Japanese writers to like really sell the kind of horror that Silent Hill was going for in my opinion. It's supposed to be like small town America but viewed through the lens of like Japanese people and that's why the vibe was always off from the western developed Silent Hills in my opinion. It very specifically has to be about small town America being viewed through the lens of Japanese writers and artists um, and reinterpreted into their style but we'll give this a go and I'll try to be fair to it um, I won't show the whole thing because it is about two hours long but I'll just go through it and give some of my like rambling thoughts um, right away uh, it's it does look nice um, it is a quite pretty game uh the graphics are very decent um yeah we've got some environmental storytelling here a sign that says hope on it and somebody's written no hope on it okay that's that's a bit on the nose um the sort of thing i'm a bit worried about from these future silent hill games is the old games were pretty subtle where you wouldn't really walk into a room and see something like that you might see like graffiti that was very strange and unsettling that would say something like there used to be a hole here it's gone now and you're like what the hell does that mean whereas that no hope message it's just so on the nose and so generic and bland um but i'm i'm trying not to bash this but it is it is it is hard to win me over with my position on this franchise and what's happened to it but the positives it does look nice um i don't think it is like it's really blown me away the way the fox engine did i'm not sure what engine this is made in but the lighting uh isn't exactly like blowing me away the way it did back during pt and stuff and i will try to stop comparing it immediately like soon because i know it's going to get annoying for people um, but it is very nice still and very detailed. Um, yeah, I yeah, I like how grimy everything is. That's capturing a lot of the Silent Hill vibe. Um, yeah, a lot of the graffiti is still a bit on the nose with the stuff it's saying. Um, but yeah, I'll try not to bash that too much. So we'll just walk into some of these rooms, interact with stuff, see what's going on. Hope we don't run in, into any like jump scares because Silent Hill the old games they did have a few things like that. But most of the time it was just an unsettling, oppressive vibe 
that really got to you and really unnerved you rather than like stuff jumping out at you like there were a couple of famous ones like when uh in the first game when you're in the school and you go up to that locker and a cat jumps out at you like a really classic one like that um but yeah mostly silent hill it never re relied too much on uh like jump scares and it was more just a vibe and like a creeping dread that followed you the whole time now this is different they've put f like fmvs like full motion video sections in here um it's a bit strange because the actress here is very clearly japanese but she's been dubbed over by i presume someone who's american um and things are a little bit out of sync when she's speaking um but yeah she does a quite job quite a good job acting this i think this actress um these parts are i find them quite strange and uh unsettling i don't really know what the, the point of being like full motion video was uh couldn't you just have got that uh, actress into the studio and like captured her like mo capped her and just done a pro like a normal cutscene um maybe they're implying there's going to be some sort of live action element to future silent hill games some sort of companion tv show or something because that's all the rage now everyone's adapting every video game they can into tv and film i'm um, just skipping along a bit um so yeah i found this letter this is really the short message uh that maya left um quite a heartfelt letter um, and I do like this part of the story where uh, our character has very clearly hidden this letter out of jealousy that uh, Maya or whatever uh, she was very she's very close to our character's friend and our character's getting jealous that she's like trying to steal her friend away. It's quite clearly romantic uh, undertones or overtones uh, whatever word I'm looking for there to this whole thing uh quite clearly some sapphic romance is involved here um and i thought this was quite a well written little note and that's more the silent hill stuff i like the little, little notes and let of course silent hill 2 one of the biggest parts of the game is the letter that uh mary left for james um so yeah finding notes and little collectibles that fill out the world uh they were always very big in uh silent hill and other survival horror games like it's really a big trope by now i will say uh what i'm not a huge fan of, fan of is our character talking to herself all the time not just little one or two word little uh phrases or anything like having full conversations with herself um i'm not that into that also there's more graffiti here of it's not your fault um and stuff like that I'm just going to speed up the footage a bit here because I think it's a lot of me uh, running into this monster and just getting uh, taken out. There's a pretty cool mechanic where it sort of just reverses time every time you get caught. And our character's very much aware that they've been like, they've been, they've been killed or whatever and been brought back. And they're sort of being tortured by this creature that's following them. It's pretty much meant to be a representation of either their our character's mother or of uh, Maya, the girl who we uh, think may have uh, unalived herself or whatever. Um, so I'm speeding this up because I was feeling quite a lot here at this section. Um, this is quite near the end of the uh, demo. Again, I caught out a lot of stuff because I was wandering around just uh, exploring, looking at notes. Um just taking in the environment but the main gameplay uh i, I want to leave this in because it is about running down these dark corridors try not to run into the monster and when you do see it you have to like sort of turn around and lure it away from where you need it to go so this time i figured it out i lured it out of that door it's now chasing me so i'm leading it around in a big circle um again this is very much like the PT corridor uh, from Kojima's game where you're walking around the same corridor over and over and there's a monster behind you the whole time. Uh, that monster was called Lisa. Uh, and again, I got caught again here. 
Um, it was getting a little bit frustrating uh, that I kept messing this up. Um, and it is a bit, it's a bit close to Silent Hill Shattered Memories as well, where you didn't really have a weapon in that game. There wasn't really combat, uh, but you were always just running away from the monsters and just trying not to get caught by them. Uh, Silent Hill Downpour, it also had a sort of section like this, where there was like a big black hole portal monster thing chasing you that you had to run away from. Um, so these are both reminding me of that. Um, and it's a shame that I was like so poor at the game that I uh, kept like uh, running into the monster over and over again, getting caught. But yeah, I just wanted to leave all this in just to show uh, what the main sort of idea of the like gameplay is. It's really uh, these areas. Um, so my characters, they're getting really frustrated now because every time they've died, they've remembered that that's happened to them. It's a pretty good way of uh, getting over the sort of uh, thing in other games where it doesn't really make sense that you you know you die and then your character comes back and they don't remember it or anything but this is pretty a good way of getting around that where they absolutely remember everything that's happened and it's clear to them that they've just been reset in time and that they're sort of in hell or in limbo which Silent Hill has always been like a representation of those ideas um, and what's more horrific than, you know, just repeating the same thing over and over again and just being killed over and over and being punished. Because um, our character, they pretty much feel that they are being uh, punished for what they did to Maya or Maya uh, or however you pronounce her name by not giving her letter uh, to their f other friend. Uh, Amelia, was it, I think, was our other friend. Our character's called Anita and then Amelia is our best friend who Maya seems to have been close to and sort of had a crush on or something or at least it's implied that there's some sort of romantic undertones or something there and our character they were kind of jealous um, and they seemed to like Maya too and were a bit like upset that she didn't really notice them uh, but, and she was more interested in uh, their friend um, so it is it is a somewhat uh, intriguing little story that they've told here um, it's nothing like that's blowing me away or anything but it was pretty decent um, but I did think uh, some of the delivery is a bit uh, it's a bit creepy pasta some of the stuff they've done here uh, like it feels like it would have been big on tumblr in 2013 uh, this little story about these friends who fell out and then one of them unalived themselves and cursed the other ones and uh, sort of made them trapped in this apartment complex. I don't think we're actually in Silent Hill right now. We're in a different town or something in this like haunted apartment complex but it is somewhat linked to Silent Hill because every time we get into like a traumatic event uh, the fog sort of shows up here. And our character, they keep going to the roof and like throwing themselves off. And we get a little warning message about if you're uh, not doing well mentally in real life, you know, you should contact this helpline and stuff. Um, but each time our character throws himself off, uh, they just wake up in the apartment building again. And it's very clear that they're just trapped here. And like there's an older body of themselves that's just laying here. And you, they, they're getting the sense like there's no way out of this. And they keep getting creepy text messages. Again, this makes it a bit dated in my opinion. The smartphone horror movies or internet horror movies. Where characters are getting creepy texts and stuff from ghosts. Like in Unfriended or uh, Friend Request or any of those like 10 year old horror movies. Uh, this stuff with smartphones and the internet being used for horror feels a bit out of date these days. I know, we're, I know we're all still on smartphones and social media and stuff, but it feels like commentary that's kind of, we've gone over all this in all our games, all our films, and it's a bit like they're very late to the party on critiquing social media and the internet and this sort of kind of bullying and stuff. Um, so maybe I'm wondering if the designers of this game like the writers, they're maybe a bit older 
a bit more uh, of boomer age uh, and they think they're having like a hot fresh new take with their critique of social media and stuff and again it's not terribly done it's just it's a bit generic and kind of not the thing I play Silent Hill for you know like experienced teenage angst dramas about social media bullying and stuff um, but I get that it is a big problem and uh, it, these sort of things do go on where people in high schools like they just turn against certain people they start these chat gr chat groups and Facebook groups just to bully these like individuals and most of the schools uh, like I see that's a big thing in America I think uh, this kind of bullying I th in where I'm from in Ireland uh, like in the north of Ireland uh, if anybody tried this kind of stuff like the school would just throw you out immediately if you were found to be the ringleader of a gang that was like torturing somebody on Facebook all the time or something uh, so schools here they are pretty good about that um, like they will just destroy somebody if you're like trying to ruin somebody's life with this kind of bullying uh, the kind of bullying that goes on uh, in schools around here it's more just like I don't even think you could call it bullying it's just sometimes people get into an altercation and throw, throw fists at each other but then it's all sort of forgot about the next day and it's not like there's persistent well you can't really say for sure but at least when I was at school it was just that was the kind of stuff that went on one day fights between people who were mostly good friends and then it was all sorted out and there wasn't anybody like going around in a gang picking on like first years and just trying to ruin their life for anything so I'm not saying it doesn't happen but it just it, ne it never felt like these American stories you hear about the sort of stuff that goes on in high schools that end up in people like you know showing up at the school with like firearms and stuff and like really crazy shit like that um, that kind of level of bullying it doesn't seem to occur here um you might get people who feel uh like certain teachers are picking on them and stuff like that and there i think there have been cases like that where a teacher has been pulled up uh for like uh uh really being unnecessarily harsh against certain individual pupils and stuff like that but yeah i'm getting off on a bit of a tangent here about uh bullying and stuff but yeah it's a lot it's a lot of the main theme of this game really is uh the school seemed to torture maya and uh it seemed like our character maybe had a hand in turning people against her and calling her a witch and uh trying to ruin her life or something she's she was an artist and all these paintings and drawings and stuff we're finding it's her artwork and every time we find one we sort of get like a flashback um to one of those fmv videos and we get another little bit of story each time we find one um and she seems to be one of the one who's keeping us here like her spirit or something you could call it um and there's also the other sub story where it seems to be our character uh, they had a terrible like home life their mother was torturing them and their sibling I believe we had a brother who like died uh, because the mother locked him in a cupboard one day uh, or yeah, found him he, first she locked him in the cupboard and then found him unconscious he like ran out of air or something and then she hid the body in a fridge um, and yeah that kind of stuff um, that is pretty silent hellish but the delivery of it it was too like uh, on the nose again it like really just explained everything that happened and like the OG Silent Hills I feel that kind of story it would be told but uh, they would have implied a lot more left little hidden clues and made the player piece all the information together themselves a bit like how Dark Souls does it with their like uh, backstories for characters and stuff it's all in item descriptions and just little environmental details and uh, people piece the lore together themselves um, but again it's not really the worst written thing I've ever seen but ultimately a lot of this is, is just feeling like um, they're trying to just redo PT here with this like, little free game 
and try to do what Kojima was doing with his marketing plan. And it is just really, I am still bitter about it 10 years later. Because you were, you were, you had a license to print money with what you were doing with PT, getting Kojima, Norman Reedus, uh, Guelmo del Toro, and uh, who's the big manga artist, the big horror manga artist that they had, uh, who was on board. Uh, uh, forgotten his name now. This is really embarrassing, but yeah, he's the guy who writes like Tome and uh, Spiral and stuff. Oh, this is really deeply embarrassing that his names just slipped my mind. Sometimes that happens, Japanese names, they just like vanish out of my head. All these Japanese developers and uh, artists and stuff. Uh, but yeah, everyone knows who I mean anyway. They were all going to collaborate with Kojima. And like the hype was going to be unreal. That was going to revive the series in such a huge way. And even if the game was really weird and strange and very Kojima-like, it would still probably be less generic than what's going on here. And again, it's not that it's like completely terribly executed. It just feels like a sort of story that should have been told like 10 years ago. And that we've sort of moved past culturally this kind of storytelling or whatever. Uh, or the sort of ideas that they're discussing about social media and like high school bullying and stuff like that but i do think the core these characters the core uh idea of betrayal and uh how our character uh made this huge mistake of hiding that final letter and being need being uh needing to like admit what she did and ask for forgiveness so that she can sort of free herself from this cycle which is what's happening here at the end uh, we've finally broken out of it. Um, and so it's not a completely bleak ending. Um, which you would have expected them uh, because of what like the Western developers did and the other Silent Hill games that came after the originals. They always ended like in a really cringe, uh, sort of like edge lordy fashion with like the darkest possible outcome a lot of the time it seemed. Like, there was, like, the potential to have, like, some more decent good endings. Quote-unquote good endings where the character sort of survives and stuff. But, yeah, a lot of the times they didn't have as, like, hopeful an ending as this. Where our main character seems to have, like, seemed to have reconciled with Maya's spirit or something there. Uh, and then we get this, like, message to herself again that was at the start. Only this time, instead of writing forward to the adult version of herself this is back to 18 year old uh anita i think it says to my 18 year old self at the end so yeah it is it is a decent it's a it's a free game like so i can't be too completely mad at being given free stuff um it's only like an hour and a half long maybe two hours if you get really stuck in some of the corridor chase sections um but ultimately, I do feel like this is kind of a knockoff of what Kojima was trying to do. This is like the we have PT at home, basically. Uh, like when you ask your ma if you can get a burger from McDonald's, and she's like, "Oh, we've got burgers at home," and then you just go home and eat this sort of knockoff, like store brand, uh, burger, uh, or whatever you know that meme. Uh, but it. It is. It has got a lot of decent elements too. Like I did think it was graphically pretty impressive. The music here, Akira Yam Yamaoka, and Mashiri Ito uh, doing the like monster design, it was pretty decent. Um, and it did have like a creepy vibe at times. And I did quite like the mechanic of you didn't really die. You just got like resurrected, and it sort of fit with how the character was being tortured. In this sort of limbo. Um, but yeah. I wasn't fully blown away with it. Or anything. I'd give it like a 7 out of 10. Pretty decent time. But nothing sort of like groundbreaking. That you haven't seen before. Or that wasn't done before. In horror like 10 years ago. Or even before then. But yeah I'd give it a chance. And yeah thanks for watching.